I walked into the boutique with confidence, successful, respectable, ready to spend a significant amount. But instead of a warm greeting, I was met with disdainful looks and whispered insults behind my back, as if I didn't belong there. In that moment, I stayed silent, turned around, and left, not in defeat, but with determination. They have no idea who I truly am, and how shocked they'll be when they find out I'm the new owner of this boutique. I was certain that today wouldn't be memorable in any way. I stepped out of the car and looked around. The path to the boutique was lined with marble steps, gleaming under the morning sun. I had a specific plan. Go in, pick out a gift, and leave quietly. Nothing complicated, just routine business. But an inner unease had been nagging at me since the morning. It wasn't about the price or the difficulty of choosing. No, I knew exactly what I wanted. The real anxiety was about how I would be received. I'm used to being judged by appearances. Those looks that immediately make it clear you're out of place. They're like needles, not causing pain right away, but leaving small marks on the soul. I had long since learned not to pay attention to them, but today something in the air felt particularly tense. Maybe it was just a premonition. I was supposed to handle it as usual, walk in calmly, do my business, and walk out. However, deep down, I understood that this small, invisible struggle with judgment might intensify today. Pulling myself together, I climbed the steps. The boutique looked impressive. Glass displays, expensive finishes, the floating letters of the logo cutting into the sky. This place symbolized luxury, power, and I couldn't wait to see if it lived up to my expectations. Work. As soon as I opened the doors, a cold wave of disdain washed over me from head to toe. I hadn't taken more than a few steps inside when I felt their eyes on me, not as a customer, but more like an uninvited guest. This store seemed to operate by its own rules, where people who looked like me were, to put it mildly, unwelcome. The woman at the counter, stern, dressed in a white suit with perfectly styled hair, didn't even bother to glance in my direction. She was chatting animatedly with a colleague, but their conversation clearly shifted to me as soon as I got closer. They rarely come in here, she said, not addressing me directly, but loud enough for me to hear. She quickly changed the topic, as if to confirm that I wasn't worth her attention. I felt a dull rage building inside me, but I gave no sign of it. I was well acquainted with these games. I approached the counter, expecting that she would have to serve me, but even then her voice was laced with insincere politeness. Behind the cold greeting lay deep contempt, and it was evident in everything in her tone, in the way she interrupted my questions, in how her gaze slid past me to another customer. I wanted to say something back, to let her know she was wrong in her assumptions about me, but instead, I turned silently and headed for the exit. I knew she had already written me off, but this performance mattered more to me than it did to her. When I stepped outside, the air felt fresh and cold. I paused for a moment and looked back, the store's sign dazzled with luxury, almost mocking me. The thought kept nagging at me. Why does this happen? Are they so certain in their rightness that they feel entitled to humiliate people without considering the consequences? But at that moment, standing on the sidewalk, I realized I wouldn't quietly endure this. This experience became the starting point for something bigger. I could leave like any other customer get angry, complain on social media, or simply forget about the incident. But that would be too easy. Something inside me demanded a more meaningful response. I would no longer return here as just another shopper. No, that wasn't enough. In that moment, a plan began to form. In time, these people would be surprised to learn that I'm no longer a customer. I'll come back, but in a different role as their new owner. And then they will look at me differently. I returned home, but the thoughts about what happened in the boutique wouldn't leave me for a minute. The way they looked at me, as if I didn't belong there, it was more than just a coincidence. Those glances, that cold disdain, as if all my achievements meant nothing in their eyes. I wasn't just someone who wandered in by mistake. I'm someone who, through hard work and effort, has achieved a success most people can only dream of. And yet, to them, 
I was invisible, insignificant. I thought about it for a long time, sitting in the silence of my apartment. This incident seemed to stir something deep inside me, as if I had to prove my worth all over again, despite everything I've already accomplished. I've seen it many times, people judging by appearance, by skin color, by some made-up standards, but this time felt different. I couldn't shake the feeling that I needed to do something significant. This wasn't just an incident. It was a challenge. That evening I made a decision. I will no longer let anyone underestimate me, not those who look down on me, not those who feel safe in their narrow-minded world. I'll handle this in my own way, the way only I can. That boutique will become a part of my life, but not as a customer, as its owner. In the days following that incident, I spent my time studying everything about the boutique brand. I dove deep into reports and financial analyses. At first glance, it appeared to be a successful chain of stores with locations across the country. Their reputation was built on luxury and exclusivity, and they guarded their elite image fiercely. However, the deeper I dug into the reports, the clearer it became. The outward prosperity was hiding internal problems. Financial reports from the past few years showed declining revenues. The company seemed to be struggling to maintain its position in the market. Rising expenses, shrinking profit margins, and conflicts of interest within the management team these were all signs that the brand was on shaky ground. I reached out to my contacts in the financial world to gather more information. Friends confirmed my suspicions. Several branches were already on the verge of closing, and the leadership was keeping this hidden from the public eye. This was my opportunity. I realized that a well-timed strike could be fatal for the company if approached correctly. After developing a strategy, I contacted lawyers and consultants to prepare an acquisition offer. It was going to be difficult, but it was possible. The company was vulnerable, and if I played my cards right, it would be mine. One of my contacts, Mark, an expert in mergers and acquisitions, supported me. This won't be easy, he said after I described my plans, but if you hold your ground in a few months, you could own this chain. I'm ready. I replied firmly, I need this to happen as soon as possible. Sitting at my desk in the office, I signed the first letter containing the acquisition offer. It was only the first step, but everything depended on it. My proposal was designed as a multi-stage takeover, allowing me to gradually buy up shares of the company. For now, none of the boutique's staff knew that soon I would become their new owner. I closed the folder of documents and stood up from the desk. My thoughts drifted back to that day in the boutique. It's amazing how a brief interaction can change your life, pushing you toward actions you never even considered before. All that was left was to wait for their response. I knew the company's leadership was desperate at the moment, and they would find it hard to refuse my offer. They didn't yet realize that their familiar world was about to change. The staff, the very people who looked at me with disdain, would soon be working for me. I wouldn't return to buy something from them. I would return to own them. Negotiations had begun, but I kept all my moves under the strictest secrecy. No one could know that their familiar world was already starting to crumble. To the boutique staff, I was still the same person they had humiliated. They continued living their lives, performing their routine duties, completely unaware that their future could soon change drastically. I was like an invisible enemy, creeping closer to strike at the perfect moment. During this time, I often walked past that boutique again and again. Sometimes I'd stop for a moment by the display window, peering inside. The same people. The same cold stares. The same arrogant attitudes. Especially that woman at the register. She still looked at customers with disdain, judging anyone who didn't meet her standards. I watched her face transform whenever someone didn't fit her expectations. I knew this wasn't just a temporary behavior. It was part of the culture of this place, and I understood that it was my job to change it. Each time I looked at her, my desire grew, not just to own this store, but to overturn its very foundations. The staff who felt superior to others would be replaced, 
and the culture of arrogance would be wiped from this company's face. I didn't want to just buy a boutique. I wanted to rebuild it from the ground up, to create a place where no one would ever feel the way I had that day. Soon, everything would be different, and they would have no idea what was coming. The power was now in my hands, and it was only a matter of time before I made my move. Days passed in negotiations. I moved forward step by step, maintaining my composure. My legal team was steadily increasing pressure on the company's owners, and it was clear they were gradually leaning toward toward my offer. I wasn't rushing the process. Time was on my side. Everything had to be done meticulously, without haste, but with precision down to the smallest details. I continued walking past the boutique, observing its life as if it were a play. Deep down, I knew this performance would soon end. One day, as I passed by, I decided to go inside again, to relive the feeling I had experienced the first time. The woman at the counter looked at me just as she had before, as if nothing had changed. Good afternoon. How can I help you? She said with the same coldness as that day. I simply smiled and replied, I'm just looking around. She turned away, showing not a hint of interest, as if my presence was just a temporary annoyance. But I knew that soon my presence would become permanent and everything here would change. That evening, I met with my lawyers. We discussed the final details of the deal. Most issues had been resolved and all that was left was to wait for the final signature. With every step, I became more convinced that my mission wasn't just to buy the business. It was something more, a journey to uproot the arrogance that had taken root here. One night, when I was practically ready to close the deal, an email arrived. The brand's owners were prepared for the final discussion. This was the moment of truth. They realized their position was weakening and had finally decided to give in. I opened the email with a slight sense of triumph. All my efforts had paid off. As I read through the lines, each one felt like a victory tune. Just a little more, and this place would be mine. After reading the email, I recalled my last visit to the boutique. I had seen that same woman at the counter speaking to a customer with the same coldness she had shown me the first time. She didn't know that her world was about to collapse. None of them knew. They still looked at me as if I were some insignificant passerby, unaware that I was about to become their new owner. When I entered the negotiation room, the air was thick with tension. Sitting at the table were the very people who, not long ago, had looked down on me. Their expressions had changed, though there was still a faint trace of confidence. Confidence that they were in control, that they still held the reins of the situation. But I felt calm. Sitting across from them, I experienced a strange sense of satisfaction. These people had no idea that their world was about to shift. We sat across from each other, each wearing a mask of professionalism. But inside, I felt a quiet joy. They didn't realize they had been losing control all along. All their mannerisms, the arrogant glances, the cold remarks they had greeted me with when I was just a customer, now seemed pointless. They were merely playing out their final hand. I knew the process would be long and exhausting. They would fight for every percentage, for every little detail. But I came prepared. Every word they spoke, every number on the table, was part of my strategy. All I had to do was wait for them to start panicking. The negotiations were tough, as expected. The company's owners weren't going to give up easily. The atmosphere at the table remained formal, but I could sense their positions gradually weakening. One of the top managers, an older white man with a cold stare, looked at me with clear irritation. At one point, he leaned forward, locking eyes with me, and said, You do realize this deal may not work out in your favor? We know the market better than you, and if you continue down this path, the consequences could be unpredictable. I looked at him, knowing full well that his words were nothing more than a last-ditch attempt to maintain control. The confidence in his voice was gone. He knew they were losing ground, and I could see it. I understand the risks, I replied calmly, but my calculations show something entirely different. Let's not delve into threats. This is strictly business. Silence filled the room. 
everyone knew his attempt to shift the momentum had failed. I continued discussing the numbers, pretending to play by their rules. But the whole time, I knew. By the next meeting, the terms of the deal would change, and they would feel it. I could see the tension in their faces as I mentioned the possibility of revisiting the conditions in the future. My lawyers backed my strategy. We were slowly, step by step, leading them to the realization that they were losing control. I could see uncertainty starting to creep into their eyes. They tried to keep up their facade, but beneath it, I could sense the growing panic. Can you... As the meeting came to an end, I gathered my papers and stood up from the table. A heavy silence hung in the room. The company's owners understood that they were losing control, but they hadn't yet fully grasped that the game was almost over. Just before leaving the room, I paused for a moment by the door and glanced at the company's logo hanging on the wall. I had seen that logo many times before, but now it seemed like a symbol of something that would soon be mine. All it would take was one more move, one more signature, and I would own not just their business, but their history as well. I walked out, leaving them with their doubts. They didn't realize that our next discussion would be the final one for them. The logo on the wall no longer belonged to them in my eyes. It was already mine. All that remained was to wait for the next meeting, where I would bring this journey to its conclusion. As the purchase documents lay before me, I felt a slow, deep sense of triumph spreading within. These people never believed I could pull this off. They never thought that someone they had humiliated could become their new owner. The papers sat on the table, and every word on them signified my victory. I slowly signed the final page. This wasn't just a legal act. For me, it symbolized overcoming all their biases, their condescending looks, and their dismissive words. I knew they had never anticipated such a turn of events. It was beyond their narrow view of the world. At that moment, I felt something unusual. Not anger, not revenge, but a calm certainty that I had changed the course of events. I had turned their arrogance into a tool for my success. The deal was sealed. Now, the world would know the truth, and I was ready to announce it publicly. The legal team had finalized all the details of the deal, and I could calmly prepare for my next move. It wasn't just about becoming the owner of the boutique. I needed to change the very culture that had been festering within it. This was no longer just a business matter. It was a matter of justice. I reached out to the press, arranging for the announcement to be made public. This had to be an event. Not just a headline about a change in ownership, but a statement that the world was changing and those who once looked down on others would now have to face their own mistakes. Mark, my lawyer and longtime friend, met me at the office. Everything's ready, he said, handing me the final documents. The press will cover the event as you requested. What's your next move? I'm going back to that boutique, I replied, glancing at the papers. They need to see me again, but this time everything will be different. Mark nodded, understanding my plan. Are you sure this is the right step? He asked with a hint of doubt. This isn't just the right step, Mark. It's a necessity. People need to know that prejudice has consequences. <laughs> the next day, I headed to that very boutique. I was no longer the person they had humiliated. Now, I was their new owner, though they had no idea that this day would mark a turning point for them. I entered the doors with the same confidence I had when I signed the contract. This time, everything was different. I saw the same woman at the register. She didn't look at me at first, continuing her usual routine, but when our eyes finally met, her expression changed. At first, she didn't recognize me, and then her face froze in confusion and disbelief. Good afternoon. How can I help you? She said, just as she had the first time. I smiled, and this time my silence carried a different weight. I slowly approached the counter and said, I'm not here as a customer today. Her eyes widened in surprise, and I could feel the air around us grow heavier. The other employees began to glance around, sensing something was happening, but unsure of what. I'm your new owner, I said, pausing between words to let them sink in for maximum effect. The woman was visibly shaken, 
unsure how to respond. The disdain I had seen in her eyes before was gone, replaced by confusion and fear. Today, I'm here to change this place, I added, looking around the boutique. This isn't just a business, it's a chance to start over. At that moment, I knew my mission was complete. Their prejudice had backfired on them, and everything I had endured that first day was now behind me. I walked out of the boutique with a sense of victory. This was more than just a deal. It was proof that success can be found where others see only obstacles. Returning to a place where you are humiliated is always a complex feeling, but this time I felt different. I stood at the threshold of the boutique, dressed in an expensive suit, with a team of lawyers behind me, looking at the place with fresh eyes. The first time I was here, it seemed out of reach, impenetrable. Now it was mine. I wasn't sure how the staff would react. Some might not recognize me. Others might remember the unworthy customer they had ignored. But one thing I knew for certain, this day would stay in their memories for a long time. Everything had changed, and I was eager to see their faces when they realized I was no longer just a visitor. I took a deep breath and stepped inside. Crossing that threshold meant witnessing the end of their familiar world and the beginning of something new. When I entered, the first thing I noticed was the look on the face of that same woman at the register. The same cold mask, the same arrogant expression. She glanced at me just as she had the first time, but now something in her gaze wavered. Her eyes lingered a little longer, and I could see her tense up as she noticed my confident stride and the team of lawyers accompanying me. I walked straight to the register. We stood face to face. She tried to smile, but it was forced, as if she could sense that something significant was happening, but couldn't yet grasp the full extent of it. Good afternoon. How may I help you? Her voice was as cold as it had been the first time we met. This time, I'm not here as a customer, I replied calmly, but with unmistakable authority. She froze, her smile fading. Her eyes darted to the lawyer standing behind me, then back to me. Her face remained rigid, but I could see the first signs of confusion in her eyes. I'm the new owner of this boutique, I said, carefully enunciating every word. This time, my words hung in the air like a suffocating fog. She didn't grasp their meaning right away, but as the realization slowly settled in, her face began to change. First, a flicker of confusion, then shock. The other employees, noticing the scene, began exchanging glances their faces also slowly transforming into masks of bewilderment and unease. I didn't need to say anything else. I simply watched as their world crumbled. The understanding was slow, but relentless. This boutique was no longer their fortress, no longer the place where they could feel superior to others. Now it belonged to me. When I finished speaking, I turned and calmly headed for the exit. Silence followed me. The staff, still in shock, didn't dare say a word. I could hear one of the employees whisper something to another behind me, but their faces only reflected the realization that everything had changed forever. I slowly stepped across the threshold, and the boutique's door closed behind me. In that moment, I felt an invisible weight lift from me, the one that had been pulling me down since the first day I walked into that store. Now. This boutique was mine, and with it, it had become a symbol, not just of my victory, but of justice. I paused for a moment to glance back. The glass doors, the gleaming logo shining in the sunlight, and the people who now looked at me, not with condescension, but with worry and confusion. I knew this was just the beginning. There was much work ahead to change the culture of this place, but the first step had been made, and it was exactly the step I had planned from the very start. Today marked the beginning of a new chapter in my life. The boutique, once a symbol of humiliation and prejudice, now belonged to me. But I didn't feel triumph or joy over the fact that those who once looked down on me were no longer there. This wasn't about revenge. It was about the opportunity to create change. I never sought to simply take their place. My goal was to build something new to dismantle the old system and create one where every person is judged not by appearance, but by their merits. I sat in the office, 
the same office that once belonged to the previous owner, and reflected on how much work lay ahead. Through the window I could see the boutique's showroom where everything appeared perfect, luxurious displays, stylish mannequins, and soft lighting. But I knew that beneath this polished exterior was a culture of arrogance and exclusivity that needed to be eradicated. That kind of attitude would have no place in my company. I ran my hands over the wooden surface of the desk, imagining the changes that awaited this boutique. Now, it was my store, and it was up to me to decide what its future would look like. The first decision I made was to let go of the entire old staff. This wasn't an act of revenge, as some might think. I simply understood that it was impossible to build a new culture with these people. They were part of the problem, and keeping them on would mean perpetuating the same policies of disdain and prejudice. In their place, I hired new employees, people who shared my values, respect, honesty, and attention to every customer, regardless of their appearance or status. At the first meeting with my new team, I made my position clear. We are here to break stereotypes, I said, looking around at the gathered employees. This isn't just a store. It's a place where everyone should feel respected, no matter who they are. I won't tolerate prejudice, arrogance, or judgment. We are here to create a space for anyone who values quality and respect. My words were met with attentive gazes and nods. I could feel that they understood me. Now, it was just a matter of bringing this vision to life, day by day. I watched the atmosphere change. Customers who once felt out of place began to return. They could sense that something had shifted. Smiles on the faces of the staff, warm greetings, and genuine interest in every guest. Everything was being rebuilt, like fresh air after a long, stifling night. One day, I stood by the window and watched as a man in simple clothes entered the boutique. In the past, he would have been ignored, but this time, he was greeted with respect, as it should be. I saw that not only my employees were changing, but the customers themselves. They began to feel like they were part of something new. Several months had passed since I became the owner of the brand. Everything here was different now. The staff who once acted like they owned the world were gone, and those who took their place were building the future alongside me. It was truly a new era. One day, as I walked through the boutique, I suddenly realized how much not only the store had changed, but how much I had changed as well. This place no longer stirred feelings of pain or anger in me. It had become a symbol of how the world can be transformed when you stay true to your values. When I looked around at those who had come to work with me, I felt a deep sense of satisfaction. This was no longer a store for the privileged few. It was a place where anyone could find something for themselves. Customers smiled, employees offered genuine help, and the atmosphere was filled with respect and trust. I was no longer the person who had once been humiliated. I hadn't just changed my status, I had changed the rules of the game. This wasn't just a boutique anymore. It was a symbol of change, and I was proud of what I had made a reality.